And that which we don't understand, we have a tendency to distance ourselves from. We distance ourselves from it. We don't embrace it because it, we don't understand it. Mediocrity, mediocre thinking, mediocre mindsets, and a mediocre behavior, behaviors are never God's plan for our life. To just be plain. And just be average. And, uh, and if the enemy's fighting you, and I haven't even got started yet, I, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. You're not going to sleep through this message. Amen. You're not going to sleep through this message. Do not let the enemy lower you to sleep because you blocked off your possibility of advancing the kingdom. Amen. I'm, I'm here this morning, and I come here every weekend because I'm concerned about your life. It's not because I need a congregation to preach to. It's because I have a concern and a commitment to God. God has given that congregation that platform. There's a lot of traveling that me and Pastor Sheila do. But my love for this local church is what brings me back here in the weekend. So I want you to at least respect that and stay away. Amen? At least respect that and stay away. What you're warned against and, what the, and where the enemy is fighting us is he does not want us to mature spiritually. That's where the fight is. And I've got to tell you, there are some of us that and I, and I got this through prayer because you guys don't sit down and pour your problems out to me. You know, um, you generally try to keep from that. If there's a major issue, you bring it to us, but we're not the type of church, and, this, and to our business, we're not the type of ministry to get all involved in people's personal matters. I don't, I don't believe in that. I believe that what we need should come through the Word of God. And if the Holy Spirit can't give it to me, except a person come with the issue, then we don't get involved in those insignificant issues. Because inevitably what has to happen is, is as, as Christians, we have to learn how to live life and to live God before ourselves. we got to learn how to walk this walk for ourselves. And what has happened to some of us, and, and some of us are married and have this problem in relationship, is that, that the fight is, is that we're unequally yoked to one another. you got one person who really desires to see God, pay attention, you know, that really desires to see God. And then you got another person who wants to live life outside the kingdom. It's not going to work. You got two different visions going on. And when you get two strong minded people that love each other, but have two different agendas and two different outlooks on life, you are going to create a storm in that environment. Amen. Some of what we face is not Satan. Some of what we face is the conflict of two climates coming together. It's a conflict of interest. One has this priority and another has this priority. And when those two currents come together, it does just what we see outside right now. A warm mass of air comes in contact with a cold mass of air. And if the temperature is just right, we see something beautiful. But if that temperature shift a few degrees below, we got a mess out there that nobody wants to deal with. The atmosphere that we live in will dictate the behavior of the people who are in our area of influence. And what, what 
causes the atmosphere? What dictates the atmosphere? What's on our mind? What's in our spirit? What we need healing and deliverance from? And it, it is beyond me. I'm not belly aching. I'm just speaking truth. It is so far beyond me how so many saved people are still yet holding on to roots from the past. And we're holding it because we've been built to carry oppression. We've been built to carry trouble. The church world has almost warped our thinking to make us believe that as a Christian, you're not supposed to go through anything. That as a Christian, you're not supposed to have a bad day. That every day of your life, you're just supposed to just be strong and mighty and overcome every battle. Let me tell you something. We have some bad days Amen. as Christians. We Amen. go through stuff in our mind. Amen. We go through stuff in our body. We get sick. We have to pray. We need prayer. We get depressed. We get overcome with stuff. People hurt us. And we have, to, we have to bounce back from those pains. We have to bounce back from those hurt hurts. But see, I know a man named Jesus who ran across a man who was so possessed with the devil and so possessed with the pain from his past that the things that he dealt with internally drove him to dwell amongst tombs. And the Word of God says in Mark, I believe it's the fourth chapter, that he dwelt amongst tombs and, 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 and begin to take stones and he would cut himself. He would abuse himself. He was so oppressed and so down and so beaten up that he began to self-mutilate. And he would yell and howl at the moon. And everybody around him thought he was crazy. Everybody thought he was crazy. Everybody thought he had lost his mind. Everybody thought, oh, there's just something wrong with him. But the fact of the matter is, is he never ran across a church. Until they saw Jesus standing by the seashore. And here comes Christ. And it's amazing how this man who yelled and scratched. The Bible said this guy was so possessed that he had developed superhuman strength. They had shackled this guy. Shackled him hand and foot and bound him hand and foot. And he was so possessed that he would snap the chains in half and overcome the people who were trying to bind him. So that lets me know that one of them spirits that was in him was a spirit of rage. Another one of those spirits that was in him was a spirit of low self-esteem. And a person who has low self-esteem does not need a pill. A person who has low self-esteem needs to meet God. Because we'll never be able to see anything in ourselves until we find the Christ in us. And I want you to think just for a moment. You know how many kids right now are committing murder? on social media, hanging themselves, slitting their wrists, and filming themselves hurting each other. Y'all don't see the spirit in the land? Do you see the spirit that's in the land? These children that are making these cocktails. And I'm not talking about, when I was back in school, we was at a certain age before certain things we tried. But we got babies now. Babies now. That saying that I don't want to be alive. Y'all really think that this, this thing, this anti-bullying way that sleep in America is something new? Let me, let me tell you something. The bully's been around since the devil been around. Why is it now all of a sudden that because somebody's bullied, they want to kill themselves? When I was in school, if a bully came up to me, I'd call his bluff. We found a way to overcome a bully. Bullies didn't last long because people got sick of them. You know why bully, the bullying wave is coming through now? Because there's more people who are dominating people mentally and there's less people who have esteemed themselves high so they can't take the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. They can't take the pressure. They can't take being called on the carpet. They can't take the persecution. You know why they can't take the persecution? Because we're learning in our houses to give up quick. Amen, somebody. Amen. Listen close to me. Please listen close to me. We are fighting a spiritual battle, but we're using psychological weapons. We are fighting a spiritual battle, but we are using carnal weapons. Now, if your carnal weapon
weapons are working, amen, then I'll pass this mic to you. Amen. And let you take it from here. But if you know for a fact that there's been some forces of darkness that have come up against your family and against your life and even against some of our minds and we can't get rid of it. Amen. And it continues to surface in our lives. Then I want you to grab a hold of the faith of God and allow God to teach us. Amen. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We are fighting against a mentality. And you cannot lay hands and cast out of a person the way they think. You can't get all that at an altar service. Every system that is invested into the life of a person who is contrary to the word of God, that has been sown in them. That's why they think the way they think. It's been sown in them. Now I want to show you the beauty of what happens and let's put this in a, from a biblical perspective. And I've got some scriptures to share with you. Amen. The first one is going to be, uh, open up your Bibles. And the first one is going to be found in the book of Psalms, chapter 119. And let's look at verse number 160. Psalm 119, verse 160. We're going to go just a few of those scriptures. Psalm 119, 160. And it's going to help us to get our minds into a right perspective on how to be able to overcome these particular issues. Amen. So this stuff that we're seeing, peer pressure, bullying, low self-esteem, thinking less of myself, not feeling like I fit in, not feeling like I belong. Listen, it doesn't matter how young or how old you may be. Young people who struggle with this, they become people who mature and they still find themselves traveling around trying to find some type of group to fit in. Amen? So what we want to do this morning is to find, help you and myself to find out our identity in God's kingdom so that when we get around cultures who are not receptive to the kingdom of God, we don't have to struggle with being ourselves. Amen? Somebody shout. The, most, the greatest person you can ever be. Well, y'all sound sad this morning. Come on. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at nobody but the devil. Amen? I'm only mad at the devil. I'm not mad with you. Amen? The greatest person you can ever be, you can ever be. Is, yourself. is yourself. Amen? Be yourself. That's the best person you can ever be. Stop being a copycat. Amen. Stop mimicking people. Amen. Be who God called you to be. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why I like my own styles. I don't care if it's his style or not. I make my own styles. Amen? Before I put a jersey on with another man's name on his back, on my back, I'm going to be confident in my name. Amen? So I'm not going to wear Jordan or anybody else on my back if I'm low about who Kevin Robinson is. Amen? Because God says this. He said, I'm going to make your name great in all the earth. Amen? Amen. We spend so much time making everybody else's name great and then we think less of ourselves. But who are you after you take off the name brands? Who are you after you take off all those things? Who is that person that lies underneath all those nice clothes and that all that stuff we dress ourselves up with? I want you to look there. Okay, the book of Praise the Lord. I think Sister Peter has already got it up on the screen there. Um and I said, one Psalm 119, verse number 160. It says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endures forever. So here's something that you can count on. You can always trust and believe in the word of God. When everything else fails you, when people lie to you, when folks, when folks try to manipulate you with, with words, you can always resort back to the word of God. And, and young people, I want to invest this in you this morning. I want to invest this in your life because you're going to face through the relationships that you develop with people in life, you're going to come across many people who are going to disappoint you and let you down. You cannot allow the fact that people you trusted that let you down cause you to become a person who decides just to be self-taught. You have to get yourself in a place and in a position to where you can trust the word of God. Do you know how you measure a person's character? Measure their character by God's word. And if they will walk by the word of God, amen, even if you're not there just yet, even if you're not there just yet, and all of us, understand this, myself included, we're all growing into becoming more like Christ each and every day. None of, none of us have arrived yet. Amen? But you don't want to allow the enemy to cripple your productivity and to cripple your success in life and to cripple your growth. Amen? Because somebody wounded you. Anybody in this church ever been hurt by somebody you love? Yes. 
Amen. Somebody that you really respect and somebody that you really looked up to. It, it sends a sense of, of, of pain into your heart. It, it, when, when somebody that you trusted violates that trust. But I want to speak to somebody this morning who's been, whose trust has been violated. And I want you to make your mind up that you're going to live through this. Can you just say that? I'm going to live through this. Amen. I know it's been violated. I know it didn't feel good, but you're going to live through this. Amen. Now, so trust in the word of God. The next scripture that I want you to go to, amen, which is to help us to understand the processes of God that I was talking about earlier, is I want you to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 8. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 8. All of us, myself included, every human being that's in this room, fight through it, Macau. It's going to be all right. Every human being that's in this room, every single human being in this room is going to have to start somewhere. Every one of us. Nobody is born on top. Nobody is born in charge. Nobody is born knowing all of it. Listen, even those people who say they were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, now I wasn't one of them people. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I'm a, I'm a, I like to tell people, I was born on the wood pile. I came upon hard work. Hard work. Busting wood, planting seeds in the ground, reaping harvest, pulling weeds, splitting wood, whatever needed to be done, painting, building, roofing, <laughs> whatever you could want to call it, that's what my father and family had us involved in because we had to work. We weren't born with silver spoons in our mouths. Amen? But I know this. I know that if anything ever happens with this economy, I can grow me something. Amen. I won't go hungry. I can grow me something. I can plant something and it can grow and we're going to eat good regardless of what the, how high the price of corn or cauliflower or watermelon goes up. The collard greens, they can go It doesn't matter. Amen. It does not matter. I know how to grow something. Amen. Are you with me, Deacon? <laughs> okay. So, uh, next scripture. So, the next scripture is going to be found uh, and we're just establishing our foundation here. I want you to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. Look at what it says. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 8. Are we there? Ecclesiastes 7 and verse number 8. Okay. It says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Now somebody in here needs to hear this. You off to a bad start? You off to a bad start? How many of y'all are still stuck in start? After seven years, after eight years, after 12 years, after 20 years. Is your marriage stuck in start? You know how you know it's stuck in start? Because we're no further down in the world than we met. Mentally, spiritually, financially, we're stuck in start. But there's hope. You see what the Word of God says? You know, some of, I know some of y'all want to just give up. The thought of separation and divorce and anxiety and the threat of abandonment comes up in your house every week. It don't come up in your house, it come up in your mind. The option to leave should have never been there. Y'all hear me this morning because you got to understand this. Uh, I'm putting that notebook up, that iPad up this morning because I understand you're facing the devil in your life. You don't know how to get rid of it. And I'm trying to tell you, amen, that if you're going to uproot this wickedness that keeps surfacing, and crippling our families and have us locked in these areas in life, we've got to take the necessary steps. And the first step is if we don't trust God, if we don't trust the Word of God, how in the world are we going to trust somebody beside you? I'm going to say this, and I mean this with all my heart. I've never met a natural-minded man that can remain faithful in all that he does. Our best day without God still leave me with filthy rags. Amen? The word says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Now look at this. Here's instructions. Somebody say process. process. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Do y'all see that? So watch this. Here's the word. The word of the Lord to us is the end of this thing that you're in is going to be better than the beginning. Amen. Do you believe that? Now this ain't Kevin talking to you. This is the word of God speaking. He said the ending is going to be better. So the further, be encouraged. 
Be encouraged. But while you're being encouraged, be patient. said patient means to have a perfect work. Are you patient with those in your area of influence who need deliverance? Or are you impatient? Can I ask one question? You don't have to answer. How patient has God been with us? I got to give him glory. Amen. I got to give him glory because you know Amen. God has been real patient with me. Amen. He's been very merciful. His love and kindness has been for everlasting and everlasting. Yes. Amen? Yes. Watch this. Don't allow the pressure of your life to bring out the impatience in you. Let patience have its perfect work. Better is the end of this matter than the beginning. Now, you know what's wrong with some of us? I know you don't want to admit it. Some of us ain't going to admit it, minister. We're not going to admit it. Because we've been handling these issues in our flesh, we don't want to see the end of better. We just want it to be over. Am I hitting the right thing this morning. See, we want it to be over. We don't want to see the end get better. And you know what happens when you don't want to see the end get better? You stop adding value to the situation. And out of your spirit comes every negative thought, every negative ideology, every negative attitude. There's always going to be something wrong. I'm always going to be looking for a reason to leave, a, a way to get out. I'm always going to try to find a way to stay busy. Why? Because I don't want to face the very environment that I helped to create. If you created it, you can destroy it. Let me say that again. I said if you created it, then you can destroy it. The only thing we can't destroy is that which God made. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, it says, look, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Amen. Don't be hasty to get upset. Don't be hasty to get mad. Don't be hasty to act out. No, no, no. Look what it says. For anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Y'all looking at me, you don't like me today. <laughs> but I love you with all my heart. Amen. Y'all keep them heads up and let's look at your apostle. Amen. I'm confronting this thing. You know why? Because behind the closed doors, after we come to church, behind the closed doors is where the battles really be going on. Amen. It's when them Amen. fights be Amen. breaking out. Yeah. It's Amen. when words are said to people that we love that we would not dare say in front of other folk. It's when we go to bed. That's why the Bible said, don't let that anger be on you when you lay down and go to sleep. Amen. You need to keep that mess out of your spirit and stop yeah. blaming people for the yeah. real your life is yeah. and accept responsibility that I help create this environment. Amen. And if I've created it, I can destroy it. Amen. Amen, somebody. The fact Amen. of the matter is that you don't understand how powerful of a builder you are. Amen. God put productivity in you. God put authority in you. God put innovativeness in you. Amen, Amen. somebody. How in the world were we strong when we was out in the world and didn't take no jump? And then we get saved and become spiritual wimps and let the devil run all over us and beat us after death. Amen. We used to fight. Amen. And, and be quick to cut somebody in the event that somebody came up against our family and then we get saved and every time trouble hit, now we running and tucking our toes between our legs. Well, I come to tell you this morning that you better rise up, church, yeah. and be who God called you to be. Accept responsibility for whatever in your life you created and then take that Goliath in your life yeah. and put a stone in his yeah. head and, and after you put that stone in his head, don't forget to cut the head off of Goliath. You yeah. know hit the lion in the head with the stone but we did not behead that demon that came into our life. Amen somebody. Yeah. That's when you know what happens when we don't behead the demon? It pops up in our children. It pops up in our children's children. And it comes back stronger. It comes back more disrespectful. It comes back more angry. It comes back more powerful. And we don't know what to do with it. You know why? There was a time in David's life after he slew Goliath that Goliath's brother showed up. When Goliath's brother showed up, David was an old man. 
said he couldn't fight the way he used to fight. He couldn't swing that blade the way he used to swing it. You know why? Because his physical countenance had gone down. And when your physical countenance has gone down, you can't fight these battles the way you used to when you was young. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. You got to let patience have its perfect work. Know that the end of this thing is going to be better than it was in the beginning. I know you're suffering and going through now in your mind. I know you're frustrated and just wanted to end, but I come to tell you, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. The Hebrews say he is the Aleph and the Top. The Bible lets us know that from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He knows our ending from our beginning. What my job is, is to find out how can I remain faithful in between the Alpha and the Omega. How can I Yeah. It's in between Monday and Wednesday. Yeah. It's in between yeah. Wednesday and Sunday when I have the most trouble. It's the in between time. It's the in between time when I'm laying down, getting up, getting ready to go. It's that in between time that I don't mind is a devil's workshop. Yeah. Don't give place to the devil. Get yourself away from any and everything that does not represent the kingdom of God. Yeah. And better see it yeah. before that we have these promises. Let us cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of I said all that to say this, that holiness will uproot perversion every single time. And if God said, I need you to be holy because I am holy. You can't be holy with a rage demon. You can't be holy with a sexual spirit. You can't be holy with a spirit of abandonment and rejection in your heart. You can't be holy when you haven't even put forth your best effort in your marriage and your first option is divorce. Some of y'all divorced already. You just live it in the same house. That piece of paper ain't holding you together. Y'all haven't worked together in years. You already divorced. You know what a divorce is? It's a death. It's a dying to something that was once beautiful and pure. And then you got two people that came together that said, I do before God, before their family. Don't you celebrate the marriage ceremony and then, and, and then destroy the relationship. Amen. The Bible says that God will deliver all. He's faithful. He will deliver the ungodly out of persecution. But the persecution is going to come, brothers and sisters. I see pastors posting on social media all the time. And... I'm not a negative spirited person, but I've just noticed that here as of late, pastors don't believe they're supposed to be persecuted. Pastors today, some pastors today, some leaders of some we don't believe we're supposed to be persecuted. The first sight of something coming up against us, even pastors are lashing out at people now in their flesh. What happens if they, blessed are they, who are persecuted for righteousness sake? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What happened to those passages of scripture, brother? What happened to that mindset? What happened to the attitude? You know why? Somebody told them that you were supposed to be a successful pastor. And they thought a successful pastor was somebody who had a million congregants and never had trouble in the church and never had to deal with a devil and never had to deal with a broken family and never had to face homelessness and never had to face racism and never had to face bigotry and never had to face low self-esteem. Let me tell you something. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. He was tempted on every side. Hallelujah. The word said he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You're not healed because of your good deeds. You're not healed because of your good attitude. You're not healed because you came to church on Sunday. You're not healed because you've been trying to be patient. You're not healed because you've been a good mother or a good father. You're not healed because you paid your tithes. It all lies on Jesus Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, yeah. I will draw all men unto me. And the minute that we get the focus off of him who is able to keep us from falling and get him the glory and the dominion, we give place to the devil. Amen. Do, I, do you hear me this morning, church? A divided house will not stand. It will fall to desolation. It will come to destruction. A two-headed serpent is a freak. Do you hear what I'm telling you?
telling you, hallelujah, somebody's head is going to have to come off. I don't know if it's going to be yours or his, but somebody is going to have to submit to the word of God where the husband will love his wife as Christ loved the church and where the wife will be obedient to her own husband as unto the Lord. And if you're not ready to follow those instructions, it'd be best you stay by yourself because we've got too many toxic families in the house of God and toxic people make toxic environments and toxic environments bring toxic cultures and toxic cultures make toxic babies. Amen somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, I need to be purified. I need to be holified. I need to be sanctified. I need to get myself to the foot of the cross where Jesus paid it all for you. Yes. He's 
I've been bitter about the condition of my family. I've been bitter about all of it. And it's hindering my praise. It's hindering my walk. It's hindering my attitude. It's hindering how I treat people. I've become secluded. I've become isolated. I've locked myself away. I'm beginning to think negative of people who really love me. I've become double-minded. Yeah. I don't know what is happening to me. But you got to go back to where it started. And if God yeah. called you in the beginning to come to something holy, you got to know that the first fruit is holy. The whole lot. Yes. yes, yes. Those things we face, they manifest in our lives in ultra egos. And this person around Eric, another person around Sister Faye, another person around Susie, another person around Brother Davis, another person around Sister Cindy. No, no, no. You don't even know who you are anymore. Amen. Amen. You don't know who you are anymore. What are you standing on? What do you really believe? Do you really believe that me, in my right mind, I would drive three hours to come down here to preach to you if I didn't believe that the king was in you? Amen. Do you really believe that? Amen. This isn't a pat on my back. I'm telling you, what drives me here on Sunday to get is because I believe that there's something in you. Amen. If I had given up on you, I'd have moved on. Amen. But listen, you have to believe that for yourself. That's right. And you got to start acting accordingly to what you believe. Listen close. Listen close. The battle is me versus me. Amen. 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 It's not you versus the devil. Amen. The devil's already defeated. Amen. And you'll find out when you know who you are, you'll be able to endure trials and tribulations out of every one of them comes a testimony. Yes. Some of y'all got discipleship confused with attention. Y'all got discipleship totally confused with attention. I'm not going to give you attention when you ask me for discipleship. When you ask me for discipleship, that means you're ready to give up something. Amen. And some of y'all ain't gave up nothing yet. Amen. You just come to church. Amen. But you really ain't gave up that old mindset that you had. You haven't given that up yet. You, you, you're still wounded, you're still hurt, but you haven't given that up yet. You know what you got to give up? You got to give up your uniformity. You got to give up what's comfortable. You got to give up being around people who you just like and who you feel safe around. Amen, somebody. Because as long as you just feel safe around them, you'll never be able to really experience him. Amen. David said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That means I'm by myself. Amen. I don't see anything or anything around me Amen. to help me. Death is knocking at my door. Yeah. Then Paul rises up and says, oh, death, where is thou staying? Yeah. Oh, grave, where is thou victory? We walk, thank God, through Jesus yeah. Christ, who always causes us to try. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yeah. You got to be at a place where you are not yeah. afraid to be alone in your life. Amen. When my father and my mother Amen. will see me. So that men may begin to see your good works. The reason why you're on that dark path right now is because God has invested light on the inside of you. So don't you get tired of it, honey. You got to understand that the very light that radiates off of you, you got to learn how to see by it yourself. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing how everybody comes to you and you got a right answer for them, but nobody helps you with your depression. Amen. Nobody helps you with your anxiety. You got to put a smile on for all your children. You got to make it seem like everything's all right because they just used to you being Papa and Mama. Yeah, you've been labeled the cornerstone of the family. You didn't ask for that title. All you wanted to do was be a mama to somebody. But all of a sudden now, you're the backbone of the family. Amen. Did you get to church? And now you're being labeled all these other things. Well, I come to tell you this morning that you got to look. trials and tribulation. Yeah. And the moment that you make your mind up that I'm not going to turn out like the people who oppress me. I'm not going to turn out like the people who hurt me. I'm looking at that example and I'm going to love you right from where you're at. And because I love you from right where you're at, even though you abused me, even though you rejected me, even though you threw me away, you cannot turn off my love gift. And because I love, I'm a friend of God. And as I'm a friend of God, I know what God is getting ready to do. And because I'm his friend, I come by here this morning to let 
to know it's going to end better. Amen, amen. Can't you see the cycle? Can't you see the cycle? The devil will make you make up stuff about people. The devil will, make, will let you, your mind, drift to a place where you formulate stuff in your own mind. That ain't even happening. None of us is that important. Amen. 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 You know what Amen. it's called? Paranoia. <laughs> paranoia. You know why you're paranoid? Because something you is being exposed. And you so used to people once they see something yes. in you that ain't right. Yes. They, you know how church people do. Oh, stay away from them. Nothing wrong with them. They're against the vision. No, no, no. When a brother be overtaken in the fall, yes, give it your spiritual. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, yes. You get what I'm telling you? Yes. The problem is we got titles in the church, but we don't have enough spiritual minded people that understand that everybody got a thorn in their flesh. How don't you, don't you dare to condemn me about my thorn when you don't fail to a bribe patch yourself. You walk right with thorns all over you look like pinhead of Hellraiser. Hallelujah. We got pinheads like Hellraiser right there. Yes, I'm up on the ground, but I'm getting ready to have a breakthrough. Yeah. My mind has been stimulated. Yeah. My heart has been convicted. 
Yes, I came here in my emotions, but I'm going to leave here in my spirit. Yes, I came here in my feelings, uh, but I'm going to leave here with a, my mind lifted up. Amen, somebody. I come to contend with you on the behalf of Jesus Christ himself to let you know he didn't hang on the cross for nothing, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not I that live, but it's the Christ that lives on the inside of me. Does anybody have any Jesus on the inside? Two hours and ten minutes of your time. Amen. He's so much more. Now, if that's all the God that you got and all the God that you're getting, then shame on us. We've got to get into that place. And don't depend on the meetings here to be the only source to take you there. Yes. You've got to have a Amen. household. Yes. Your household is supposed to have peace in it. Amen. Your household is supposed to have the Holy Spirit Amen. resident. Your children are supposed to be able to sleep at night. If you up tossing and turning, scared to go to sleep in your own house, you've got a house full of spirits. And I speak in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth uh, that this house shall be made clear. That this house shall be made whole. Why? Because when you go back home today, you're going to go back with an anointing on your life that's going to cause every devil in the midst, every devil on your street is going to have to leave. Every burner in your neighborhood is going to have to stop rapping. Every drug addict in your neighborhood is going to have to put the dose up. All the gang activity is going to have to start running out. But there's two or three gathered in my name. There I am in the midst. Here's the problem. You've been intimidated by your demon. You've been intimidated by your struggle. You've been intimidated by what's facing you. Why? Because it's big. It's strong. It's been your whole lot longer than I have. But you can't depend on yourself. You can't depend on your education or the lack thereof. You can't even depend on the name of the church that you go to or who your pastor is. But you got to stand up and see the salvation of the Lord. You got to stand up and see Jesus. You got to stand up and know that it's He, praise God, that created you and not you yourself. Amen. We are the sheep of His pasture. And if you believe me, we pass the righteousness for His name's sake. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I made my commitment. I'm not going nowhere. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen. Both now Amen. and forevermore. Let somebody in the house of the Lord yes. shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. You need to make this declaration. I know there's been trouble on every side. But as for me and my house. Yes. 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 We all serve the Lord. Amen. I know the Bible's good with us. But we all serve the Lord. I know what daddy did, but here we going to serve the Lord. Yes. So, Junior, when you go over there and hang out with Papa, don't you come back here with that drunk spirit. Don't you be trying nothing. Don't you be letting nobody pick, slip you no drink. You come back in this house sober. Amen. Yes. Amen. We serve the Lord in this house. Yes. Amen. Some of you say that right now. Amen. We serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. In this house. This house. That means you got to go, then you go ahead and you go. Amen. But we serve the Lord in this house. Amen. Holly, you're not going to blame me for what type of parent I was, but you will respect me for the parent that I am. Amen. Amen. The battle is me versus me. You need to get it right. Yeah. 
We need to get it right. We need to get it right. You know what's made me right in some areas? So I'm not ashamed to admit when I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I didn't come to you to hurt you or to man you to manipulation. But I missed it. Amen. That's what sin is, is you missed it. But I won't continue in that. Amen. If I found out I missed it, you wouldn't worry about me missing that again. Amen. You know why? It's not because I'm further than I'm all that. But I will let sin live in this body. Amen. I'm going to close right here. As a child, there's things about my life that y'all don't know. I share snippets of my testimony. And while I came up in a very a full house, nine brothers and sisters, uh, eight living on the premises, My father was a great man. He is a great man. He's still living. He's in his late 70s now. <laughs> he but he didn't handle confrontation with him. His solution to confrontation was violence. It was violence. I took a lot of grown man kind of beatings as a little boy. Grown man. Didn't see many belts. He seen a lot of fists. Some knives get pulled, put to my throat as a child. Bottles being picked up and being busted across the school. I lived under a threat for almost 30 years. The things that my father spoke over me when I didn't follow his course of action. And when I renounced the Jehovah's Witness religion, after 22 years of serving in that family, I knew it was going to cost me something because I had witnessed others, for lesser reasons, pull away from the faith. And I saw how they were treated. I was a kid, though. I was 14 years old. The first time I realized that this is not the Lord had. I was bold enough, my little 14 year old frail body, I walked in there and I said, well, this, this ain't the faith for me. I don't believe in this. I, I just, I'm reading all these books and I'm reading, you know. See, see I've got a hold of the King James Bible. As a kid, see, my father started with me at age four, developing me to share his word. I gave my first sermon when I was six. Six years old. Teaching in church at six. <clears throat> That's the last time I saw your lives. I've seen your child minister the word of God at your age. Jesus was 12. Samuel was a little boy. All of them were young people. Mary. I didn't understand what the end result was going to be for me telling them that I didn't want to be a part of religion no more. But it opened up a, a door where darkness flooded my life after I renounced that faith the first time.